The evolution in the tonal plexus technique uh, that I found is that instead of a linear technique when you look at the shape of the hand, uh, you see that it's essentially in two planes here and here. So when you have the piano with long uh, keys, you're able to actually keep your hand in a semblance of this position. Uh, the difficulty is if you ever try to uh, play any of the black keys with the thumb, then you start to get the ulnar deviation. And that's what I was finding out when I was trying to approach this instrument like a traditional keyboard, is that when you're crossing over, you go in this tremendous ulnar deviation, which is very stressful and uh, not ergonomic. So I was trying to approach the instrument and, and, and uh, utilize this concept of two planes. And so what I came up with was really a concept that has come from stringed instruments. Uh, if you think of this keyboard as like essentially a string here of tones, and then here you've got a fifth higher. Then what happens is you have uh, various alternatives for fingerings now, like uh, this one. or this one or this one and that's just approaching it in kind of a I call it a position shift that's the way I remember these fingerings because for me the shift here uh, in this position is on the third one two three and that's when I'm shifting to the next position versus on the fourth would be for position shift. There's also uh, a way to approach it vertically, uh, which would be to play in this type of fashion. Or, now when you approach it uh, this way with this type of tuning, what I found is that it's much more useful for the right hand than the left hand in terms of scalar application. Because what happens with the left hand, the symmetry is lost because uh, to take advantage of the symmetry, the keyboard would need to be rotated 180 degrees in design. And that would be a spectacular innovation, I think. I would definitely want to work up technique on something like that to um, get the same kind of fluency in the left hand as the right. Uh, but essentially what happens with the left hand is you're trying to make up this, these two planes, this distance here, with your index and your pinky, which is a, a very poor substitute, and you end up back in ulnar deviation again. So you're left with patterns uh, like uh, the vertical pattern. or uh, a pattern where you would try to utilize the two planes a little bit. And as you see, you're much, much more limited uh, in terms of technique, scale technique. Uh, the advantage uh, of this fingering layout for the left hand, however, uh, is in chordal playing. So uh, fingering a, a major nine chord in a linear fashion would take two hands on this instrument. But because of the adjacent fifth, you can tune it this way or play it this way. Uh, and the same, dis advantage, the same advantage that you have in a left hand chordally becomes a disadvantage in the right hand uh, because um, you can see that the symmetry is off if I'm trying to play. I can't reach all these notes and, and the way that I end up playing even major seventh chords is kind of to radially deviate to capture those four tones as opposed to trying to play it the old fashioned way. So you end up in radial deviation here and the same chord here is very, very comfortable to play.